All right, welcome back to another episode. So in this episode, we're going to go ahead and take a look at hashing our password. Once we hash our password, um, and once we actually set up some validation, we can then actually perform an actual real authentication method with a username and password. So in this episode, we'll take a look at uh, hashing passwords, and I'll show you how we can do that. Because right now, we have a sign-up route, like a registration route, where we can create new users. Right, but we aren't uh, we aren't hashing the password. Now you obviously want to make sure you hash the password because if you don't, um, it's actually going to be really bad for the users that are signing up for your platform. Because do you really want to save raw passwords, raw text passwords in the database? Well, if the database gets breached, then the attacker has access to all the accounts, and then they can do whatever they want, and then you'll probably get in lots of trouble. Okay, so it's very important that you practice hashing your passwords, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to install a library called bcrypt.js, and this is going to allow us to pretty much uh, hash the password, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and install it. So npm i bcrypt, uh, I think it's just bcrypt.js, okay? Let's run the app again. So I'm gonna show you how we can set this up. So all we're going to do is we're going to first import bcrypt. And then once we import bcrypt, we're going to have to generate a salt. And then we're going to have to generate the hash with the salt. Okay. So pretty much when it comes to hashing, the idea behind it is you're taking a raw text and you're pretty much masking it with some salt. Okay. And the thing with hashing is that you cannot recover the original value. Okay. Which And when it comes to passwords, it's actually a really good strategy uh, to hash the password instead of encrypting. There are differences between encryption and hashing. Okay, with encryption, you can actually retrieve the original value if you have the correct secret that you use to encrypt the value in the first place. With hashing, no matter what you do, you cannot recover the original value. So let's say, for example, if you hash the word hello world, okay, no matter what you do, you can never recover that hello world value with the hash that you were given. Okay, so let me go ahead and just set up a simple helper function. So what I'll do is I'll create a new folder. I'll call it uh, utils. And I'll just create a file called helpers.js. And we'll go ahead and import uh, bcrypt. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called uh, hash password. And what this is going to do is it's literally just going to take in, okay, it's, what it's going to do, it's going to take in a string, and we're going to go ahead and first generate a salt, okay, and then we're going to go ahead and call the hash sync function. So the first thing that we should pass in, of course, is the password, okay? We'll go ahead and generate a salt. So we'll go ahead and call bcrypt.gensaltsync, and we can pass in the number of rounds, so by default, the number of rounds is 10, okay? And once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and just call bcrypt.hashsync. And all this does is it just hashes the password synchronously. So we'll pass in the password, and then we'll pass in the salt. Okay, so uh, there we go. So now let's just go ahead and export hash password, okay? And what we'll do is we'll import it in auth.js. So we'll go ahead and import that from utils, helpers, and then we're going to import hash password like that. Okay. So before we save the new user to a database, we should hash the password, of course. So what we'll do is we'll call hash password. We'll pass in the password property or yeah, the property uh, the variable into the hash password function. And let's go ahead and just console log hash password as well. And what I'm going to do is um, let me actually do this. I'm going to go ahead and remove the destructure. And what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called password down here. And I'll just pass in request.body password like this. Like I said, we'll do validation in a later episode. Okay, just so that way I don't have to just set it like this or password, hash password. I can just have all of the actual bills that I want in one variable. 
and just pass in like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and try creating a new user. So let's do Anson3, Anson3 at gmail.com. Let's go ahead and just type in a random password. Uh, so let's click send. Seems like there were no errors. Let's look at the logs. You can see that we have the hash. And if we look at the database, we have the hash right over here. Okay. And so now, like I mentioned earlier, there's no way that we can actually take the hash and unhash this value to get the original password. So the idea is when the user first creates their account, you hash the password, you save it, you save the hash to the database. And when you want the user, when the user is going to log in, what you do is the user, well, first of all, the user is going to go ahead and pass in the username and password into the request body, right? Afterwards, what's going to happen is you're going to take the password that they provided like in the text field or wherever, right? And you're going to take that password. You're going to hash that password that the user sent to your server. And you're going to go ahead and also find the user as well based off of the username or email. Okay. Once you do that, what you then do is you take the hash and you compare the hashes. And if the hashes are the same, then that means the user has entered the correct password. And that means they are, that you can authenticate them successfully. If the hashes are not the same, then they obviously entered the wrong password. Okay. So that's how we are going to implement uh, logging in users. Okay. Now we're going to go into the helpers.js file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create another function called compare password. And this is going to require two, two values. It's going to require, uh, it's going to require the actual password that the user entered in and the password, the hash password from the database. So I'll call this raw and I'll call this hash. So what we're going to do is we're going to do return bcrypt compare sync. And we got to pass in. So S is going to be the raw text password that the user is entering in either from a form or it's it, or like from Postman, right? The hash is going to be the value that we're getting from the database that we save, which is the hash that we save for the user. Okay. And if this, uh, whoops, it's hash. And if this, uh, if this returns true, that means the passwords are in fact same. Okay. So let's export that function. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to need to modify our login method which is what we're going to actually do in the next episode. Okay. So what's going to happen in the next episode is we're going to go ahead and modify our login uh, route. And we're going to have to actually uh, change all of this because we're going to actually validate the username and the password. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to compare the password that they entered. And if they entered the correct password, we'll then authenticate the user. Okay. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.